Well, good evening. How's everybody doing this evening? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, Michael. Yes. Jesus. Yes, he says it in that Phoenix, Arizona accent. And uh, he says we sound funny, but I don't know. No, he's never said that. Well, amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. I don't think I really have um, much of announcements really going on. Um, Jesus is amazing. He loves us. He's good. And um, does anybody know any really good jokes? I'm trying to stall until the rest of the praise team gets up here. <laughs> Do you know why they couldn't play cards on Noah's Ark? He was standing on the deck. That's a good one. Well, anyway, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, no, I really feel like God's doing amazing things in this season. You know, God will always give you a grace for the season that you're in. Whatever season you're going through, God will give you grace for it. If you're going through a season where, you know, maybe loss, for example. Like there was a family I actually just visited um, yesterday, and the family's going through a loss. And there's just a tremendous grace on their life. They're super, super godly people. They've sought the Lord, been diligent in seeking God the whole time. And there was just peace and joy in their house. There wasn't, they wasn't sorrowing like those who have no hope, like the Bible says not to do. Because they know who our hope is. And they know where our hope is set. But there is also a grace for them in the season. I feel like in this season, there's a grace for us as the body of Christ to really stand, be bold for the Lord and show people who he really is in Christ Jesus. And so whatever season you may be in, when you walked in here, there's a grace for it to get, for you to make it through and look like him. Not just to make it through, it's life in abundance. We just don't manage, we dominate. We just don't make it through. We're more than conquerors, amen? And so there's a grace for your life that's gonna make you a super conqueror in the season that you're in. And so we just received that by faith. I have your mic, folks. And so I just want to pray, bless our service, bless our tithes and offerings, and let's get into worship. God, we thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for, for who you are, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that there will be a miracle in the house tonight, God. And I just thank you for it. I just thank you, Jesus. You bless our tithes and offerings and our finances during this season, God. And we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me 
freedom you have given me joy you have taken my burden you have given me freedom you have given me joy you have taken my burden you have given me freedom you have given me joy you have Taking my burden, you are the well that won't run dry. Only you can satisfy through every season of my life. You are the well that won't run dry, cause you're the God, in every season of our life, we can count on you to fill us up, God, to give us the joy, no matter what the circumstances are going on around us. God, we just thank you. Thank you for your love. We thank you for your promises, and we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. Louder, louder. 
for you. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is this melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roll up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. This song is so real to me right now. I'm going through a time in my life that looks a little bit crazy, a little bit unknown. I don't know what the future holds for me. The stability that I've kind of had for a long time is, is unknown. And you know, I don't know what that looks like, but I do know that since I found this out, I've never once thought that the Lord doesn't have me and the Lord is not my provider. He doesn't know my steps and what's next for me. And there's joy in that. There's joy in that even in the unknown, He's got us. And you know, I can tell you this song, the, the weapon that we have to get to praise to Him through it all, no matter what happens. I was jamming in the car. I mean, I blared up my worship music today and was just worshiping Him through all of this. And, and some of you know my situation and some of you don't, but it's just crazy but whenever i just began to worship today in the car i mean i was screaming if someone saw me they probably thought i was a little crazy but for real i just felt like just such a weight lifted off of me and i thought you know what my weapon is this melody i can just come to him and worship him through it all and it's like no matter what the tornado is around me no matter how much that i can get my i can catch myself going to unbelief and i'm like wait a second no I'm just going to worship through this and know that he's got me. And so I, can, I encourage you today, if you're in a situation that is a little bit scary um, and you don't know what the future holds for you, just, just go to him with your weapons. Go to him in prayer. Go to him with praise. Surrender it all to him and know that it's going to be okay. Um, and that's kind of what I'm living my life on right now. And I just encourage you to do that with me. Thank you, Lord. Though your mercy never fails me, in all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see. Of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will. The goodness of God. Down of your voice, you have led me through the fire and darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you 
as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been
Beside you, nothing beside you, Father, nothing has place in our life like you, Jesus. We put you in first place, in front. We focus our eyes, our attention on you, Jesus. We love you, we honor you. We thank you, Lord, that you've got us. We give you praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm on that red. There we go. Praise the Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jacob. Hallelujah. You glad to be in God's house? Amen. 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 Jesus. He's good. How many of you know? Well, I just want to start out a little different tonight and I'm not giving place to the enemy. I'm not trying to bring glory to him. I just want to make sure I've got the right, the right crowd. I bet you do. I bet I do. I bet you do. Come on. If I ask you a question, would you honestly answer? The last, over the last 10 days, has anyone in the room struggled with fear? Fear? Okay. Praise God. He's bigger than fear. Amen. We live in a fallen world that sometimes keeps us fearful. It tries to. It wants. It surrounds us. Fear constantly. Every day when you wake up, fear's waiting on you. It's waiting to get in. It, it's like the thing on the outside trying to get inside of us. Fear. Hmm. You're not so holy that that doesn't happen, I know. I know he stays with his eye on you waiting for a crack, waiting on a chance. It reminds me of a cat just waiting to pounce on its prey. He's waiting on you to live in a place of fear. 
Hallelujah. Maybe I just need to go back to my office and preach this to myself again. We go from one crisis in life to the next. It's the world we live in. One thing to the next thing to the next thing. It's, it's just what happens. It seems like every morning we wake up with a chance to have a new problem. Hmm. Virus pandemics. Flu strands. By the way, I just want to take a side note. How many of you know we still get snotty noses that's not coronavirus? <laughs> Amen? Amen. It's still out there. I mean, we still get the same thing I've dealt with my whole life. Allergies, they're still happening. But now, man, you sniff or sneeze or cough, everybody's like, oh, he's got it. Uh -huh. Coronavirus. Recession. Earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, floods, fires, even threats of other countries attacking our country. Hmm. But we must remember in unsettled times, we find peace in the presence of the Lord. Come on, I want to talk to you tonight from this fact. Peace. Amidst fear. Peace in the middle of fear. Because no matter what the enemy throws against us, we still serve the Prince of Peace. Amen. 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 We find our peace in the presence of the Lord. Pastor Josh said something today and I was like, man, I need that. Tell me where you found that. And he looked it up for me, sent it to me. Presence of God. The scriptures often speak of God's presence in human history. The most common Hebrew term for presence is P-A-N-I-M, Panim, or Panim, which is also translated face, implying a close and personal encounter with the Lord. Mm, Jesus. Mm. Isn't that good? If we're going to his presence, we talk about his presence often. And if we're going to his presence, it means we're up in his face. Hallelujah. He's the only one who can prevent contagious, this contagious epidemic of fear. He's the only one that can prevent it. His presence. Let gentleness be seen in everyday relationships. Come on. For the Lord is always near us. Yes. Sometimes we need to calm ourselves and just get in his presence. I say that pretty lightly. Sometimes, most times, we need to calm ourselves and just get in his presence. Don't be pulled in by different distractions. Don't worry about anything. You have nothing to be concerned about. He's still God. He's still on the throne. He's still in control of your life and mine. He still has a plan and purpose. Amen. Amen. Don't be worried about anything. Be saturated in prayer through e throughout each day. Y'all get this? Mm -hmm. This is the deal. We need to offer our faith-filled request to God with thanksgiving. I'm speaking scripture right now. Tell him every detail of your life, then his peace that transcends, transcends human understanding will make answers known to you. The real scripture says it like this. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Listen, I believe this room's a bit empty tonight because of fear. I think it's a bit empty tonight because people are afraid. 
I'm not judging them. I'm, I, I'm just telling you, it's a real thing that's up in our face every time we wake up. Maybe even through dreams or night terrors. Even when we're asleep sometimes, fear's still there. But I'm telling you, there's one who trumps fear. So I'm just talking on a corporate or whatever I'm trying to say, a national basis so far. But let's talk about personal crisis, financial crisis, physical crisis, relational crisis. They catch us by surprise. They bring terror to our hearts sometimes. We feel helpless as life spins out of our control. It's not out of control. You know, we, we say that often. Oh, my life's just out of control. No, it's not. It's out of your control. Yeah. He's still in control. Fear is a powerful emotion that can cause us to respond inappropriately. All of you who raised your hands that you had dealt with fear in the last 10 days or so, I would venture out to say that probably we responded inappropriately to those feelings. Hmm. Fear will motivate us to take wrong action. Fear can paralyze us from taking any action. It can cripple you. It can, it can make you just freeze in place yeah. and not do anything. Fear can even stop us from turning to God, our one true rescuer. Jesus. Hmm. He knows every personal and world disruption that we will face. He's, he already knows. He already knows what we're going to go through. Huh. The Bible is God's timeless word. Yeah. Listen to me, it's not captivated by our time. His word is not predicated on our day. Amen. His word's true all the time. It never fails. It has all the answers and antidotes to keep us calm, cool, and collected. But somehow, we get distracted. <clears throat> And we live outside of his word and we end up in a place of fear. Come on. I have a whole lot of scripture tonight. Can you hang? Yes. <laughs> All right. Isaiah 41, verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We want to trust God, but there are times when peace fleets from us. It escapes us. Sometimes we're worried and we're anxious. Sometimes we don't want to be brave. I've got the wrong crowd or something. Come on. Sometimes we wake up and just say, I just want to have a bad day today, God. It's all right. I'll be back tomorrow. I just want to be scared today. I just want to live here in this world like everybody else around me. I just want to be afraid today. Come on, we do that. Hmm. Then God reminds us in Joshua. Joshua 1.9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever yeah. you go. Hmm. Listen to this definition of courage. Courage is fear that prays and calls on God at all times. It's reverencing God. Courage is reverencing God at all times. In my terms, courage is having more reverence for God than any other circumstance. Yeah. Hmm. Do you reverence him more than anything else? Again, be strong and do not be afraid. Six actions I want to talk to you about tonight 
to help us move from panic to peace. Listen to me. The church is in panic right now. Not just the world. The church is living in fear. I need to speak against it. I need, we need to speak against fear. We need to take up what God's word says, walk this thing out, and live in peace. He's more than able. And we forget because we watch the news or we see what's going on around us. We, we panic because we think, what in the world is going to happen tomorrow? But I want to give you six actions to help us move from a place of panic to a place of peace. Number one, they're simple. Take all your worries to the Lord. Take all your worries to the Lord. If you start worrying, you know that's not from God. Bring it to him. Here's a prayer I want to speak over you right now. Just lift your hands, would you? Just receive this. Lord, I know that Satan created the spirit of fear, anxiety, doubt, and worries to torture and entrap my mind, to rob me of my peace, my joy, my sleep. When what ifs wake me up at night, please help me to denounce Satan in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Receive that. Receive that because all of those things come from the enemy. Not from God. Take your worries to the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Um, of whom shall I be afraid? I just want to remind you tonight, there's plenty in this word yes. to give us hope. Yeah. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to be reeling for answers. We, we don't have to know what the next step is. Erica, we, we don't have to know. We don't have to know because he already knows. He's already ordered our steps. He said he orders the steps of the righteous man. He's already ordered our steps. He already places our feet on the path that he wants us to go. All we have to do is keep our eyes on him. Amen. Jesus spoke this right before his crucifixion. John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Same world we live in. He was here. He was talking about it there. He's overcame this thing. The second action to help us move from panic to peace is this. Believe that God hears your prayers. God hears you. Lamentations 3.57 says, You draw near on the day I call on you and said, Do not fear. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Amen. The third action of things to do to help us move from panic to peace is this. Number three, pray with expectancy Amen. and anticipation. Yes. Expect it to happen. When you're praying, don't just pray amiss. Pray expecting and anticipating things to happen. Hmm. James 1.6. But let him ask in faith, not with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Faith and fear can't coexist inside of me. Faith is the opposite of fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Hmm. If I'm doubting or anxious, my shield of faith 
as low. Hebrews 11.1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Number four, the fourth action to help us move from panic to peace. Thank you, Lord. Number four, remain wise and discerning. Remain wise and discerning. Lord, I want desperately to take your word to heart. But negativity and fear sometimes engulf me. Sometimes it's strong. My thoughts wander to worst case scenarios. Sometimes my thoughts begin to run rampant. It's why he says, take your thoughts captive. I need your insight to untangle facts and things that are causing me to think wrong. Holy Spirit, guide me to filter out what I should avoid listening to. Help me filter out the things that I should not even consider. You say, well, I don't know. It'd be real easy if he'd have left us some, some kind of uh, instruction. Well, he did. You know what to not think on. He said so. Whatever things are pure and just and holy and good report, bubble off. Think on these things. Lord, give me discernment and wisdom. Give me clarity of mind and heart. Guard my mouth that I don't spread alarming thoughts to others. A.K.A. gossip. Help me not gossip. Lord, help me not spread fear to other people. I'm not a fear spreader. I'm a faith spreader. I should have faith. I should be giving people courage by my life. Help me to demonstrate love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because that's fruit of the Spirit. That, that's the Spirit that lives inside of me. The same one that raised Christ from the dead. Yeah, Proverbs 1.5 A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Mm -hmm. James 1.5 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives to all liberally without reproach. And it will be given to him. One of my favorites, Roman, Romans 8, verses 5 and 6. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want peace? Set your mind on the Spirit. The fifth action to help us move from panic to peace. Number five, seek opportunities to comfort others. Sometimes what you, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Amen? That's what the Word says. We don't live in a perfect world until we're going to God. We're going to be with Him someday in heaven, but until we get there, we're not going to live in a perfect world. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news tonight, but this place, heaven can come here, but this place is not heaven. We're going to have tribulation in this world. It's not going to be a day that we wake up that fear is not trying to get inside of us. Listen, this pandemic, I hope sooner than later, will be gone. But there will be something else. The enemy is not going to quit. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This situation won't be the last crisis for this world to go through. We can't outrun. We can't outpace. We can't outdo. We can't outsmart. We can't outlive trouble. Oh boy, that's good preaching, preacher. Just tell us how bad it is. You probably won't hear that at the church down the road, so just saying, if you were looking for that sermon, you could probably find a better one. But I'm telling you the truth. 
You can't outrun trouble. Just because trouble's tracking you down doesn't mean you've done it wrong. Trouble is where we live. We live in a fallen world and, and there's trouble on every corner waiting on you. But we serve the peace giver. We serve the Prince of Peace. We serve the one who has the answers for your life. We don't have to have the answers. We have to keep our eyes on him. Come on. Mm. Jesus said in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. These are the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples to comfort them. And they can also give us comfort when we know how the story ends. Y'all know, right? You know that we have victory, right? Yes, amen. Even on the day you don't feel like it, you know. Yes. Come on. Even on the day fear is rising up inside of you and think, oh my God, what are we going to do? We're going to stand. Come on. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Because the one who gives peace is our God. Amen. Mm. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 1 John 4, 18. There's no fear in love. Come on. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Hmm. The sixth and final action to help us move from panic to peace. It's pretty simple. Pursue peace. Pursue peace. Okay, I'm just going to say it like I have it wrote. Media induced or politically motivated panic will cause more pandemic fear and consequences than any virus ever will. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it has. Taking reasonable steps to protect yourself and your loved ones will give you a sense of control that helps manage uncertainties. Listen to me. It's okay to wash your hands. It, it's okay to be clean. It's okay to take a little bit of action. It's okay to try to be in control of a little bit. Don't lick the doorknobs. <laughs> but relax a little. It's all right. God's in control. There are people who are sick. It's real. But the fact still remains that we can live in faith or we can live in fear. There's a choice. The enemy wants to use this whole thing. Uh, way bigger than the virus is fear. He wants to divide us with fear. He wants to control us with fear. I mean, it'd be so easy to sit there and think, okay, they're doing this, they're doing this. They're doing this. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? It's so easy to get there. I mean, just like that, you can be in that kind of a state of mind. Hmm. Pursue peace. Pursue peace. Yeah. Mindfully continue in activities that bring you joy. Brings me joy to be here with you. And I ain't quitting. I ain't quitting. Healthy exercise, I need some more of. Probably be good for us. We can go to the track. We can go to the track. It'll clear your head. It's bad. <laughs> Rest. Yeah. Staying connected to friends and family. Nice. Listening to praise and worship music. Nice. Come on, what er Erica said she did today. Crank that stuff up. Yeah. Make people think you're crazy. It's okay. <laughs> Expl especially reading the word of God yes. to give you peace. Without this, what do you know about peace? 
Without this, there is no peace. Hmm. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, think on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. You want peace? In a world full of fear, I'll just go ahead and say, in a church full of fear, do you want peace? Get your eyes on him. Because you're going to wake, you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. And fear is going to try to get inside of you. You're going to go home. If you flip on the news, fear is going to get, try to get inside of you. It's a tactic from the enemy. Real? It's fact. There's people sick. My friends, some of my friends are in the hospital right now. Sick. It's a fact. But the enemy wants to use those facts to get us in fear, to control us, to divide us, to confuse us. Mm. Don't listen to it. Listen to this. Peace that passes our understanding. That's what he has for us. Father, tonight we thank you we thank you for peace. Father, we thank you that you love us. You're mindful of everything we're going through. Father, you're not surprised. You're not shocked by it. Have your way in each one in this room, Father. Father, any fear that would try to rise up inside of us, God, I just ask you to arrest it. I ask you to snuff it out with peace as we set our eyes on you. As we set our eyes on you, as we set our eyes on you, as we get into your presence, up in your face, God, keep us there. Get us by the jaw and hold us in your presence, God. We love you and we praise you. We trust you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you.